In this problem, we need to find the electric field as a function of the y-axis. And then essentially this is just a case of the infinite sheet problem. So if you have an infinite sheet of charges, then you know that the electric field is equal to sigma over 2 epsilon. So this was proven before. So, But in this problem, we're not given sigma, we're only given rho, the uh, volume density. So we can easily convert the volume density into the surface density. So this is the surface charge density. And then we do that by multiplying the thickness of the sheet. Uh, so we do that by multiplying the thickness of the sheet with rho, and that will give us a sigma. So essentially, we're taking away one dimension. So we multiply it by the thickness, and now we're given a density that's in terms of this surface area. So with our sigma, we can apply it to this formula, and we find that the electric field is equal to 2d rho divided by 2 epsilon. So it's equal to d rho epsilon, so the 2s they cancel out. And then for <coughs> this electric field only applies when you're outside of the, of the slab. So let me just draw a 2D, 2D version of the situation that we have. So this is the <coughs> electric field when we're standing outside of the slab. It doesn't tell us what's inside. It's also the same for this side. So when we're on this side, the electric field moves in this direction. When we're on this side, the electric field moves in this direction. But it's always in this magnitude, as long as we're outside of the slab. So immediately we can, since we're, what we're looking for is the graph of the electric field with respect to y. Uh, so at this point, so this point is d, this point is negative d, so the entire thickness is 2d. So at these points, we know that this graph over here is going to look something like this. So it's going to be a straight line. And then uh, this straight line is going to correspond to this point, which is going to be equal to uh, d rho over epsilon. And the same for this. I mean, this time it's negative d rho over epsilon. Because once you're at this side, the electric field points leftward. So now the challenge is to find what happens in the middle. So let us open a new page. So once again, let me draw this 2D, 2D version of the situation. So imagine if we're standing at this point over here. And let's just call this distance y. So what is the amount of electric field that I will experience at this very point? So we can imagine cutting up this infinite slab right at this very point. And then essentially, you have, you're, in, you're in a situation where you have two infinite sheets, and they're kind of competing against each other. So this sheet on the left over here is going to push you towards this direction. The electric field is going to push towards this direction. This slab on the right is going to push in this direction. So essentially, it's just both sides fighting against each other. And once we're at this point, so for this particular point here, so it's quite obvious that the right-hand side wins. So this side wins because it's thicker, so it has more charge. So it's, it has uh, more charge to push you in the rightwards direction. And uh, in order to get the magnitude of that uh, particular field, we just apply uh, this same formula again. So we can break this up into two parts. So we can consider the left left-hand side first. So for the left-hand side, the surface charge density is equal to rho times the thickness, right? So the thickness is d plus y. So recall that this length here is d, this length here is y, and then this length here is d minus y. So this is the electric field from, from this section. Now the electric field from this section Quite similar, but it's in the other direction, right? So we put a minus, and then again, rho times the thickness, d minus y, divided by 2 epsilon. So uh, quite obviously, the d is the cancel out, so you get 2y rho 2 epsilon. So you get y rho epsilon, so the 2s cancel out. So this is our answer. So you see that this is actually a fun function of y, so you have rho divided by epsilon times y. So if this is a, so you see this linear relationship, that means in the in this middle region over here, this graph is going to look something like this. So it's going to pass through the origin, and then it's going to meet at this point. So this is a very bad drawing. So, but this is actually a straight line. So uh, this section over here, this is e equals to y rho divided by epsilon. So that's how you solve this problem.